to the brand new season of Audi R8 LMS Cup here in Korea. Hong Kong's elderly phone is back to defend his title against some familiar faces like the former Formula One driver Alex Yong and 2012 Audi R8 LMS Cup champion Marci Lee. DTM's Swiss star Raha Fry is back, as is Macau's Andrew Kuto. They will be joined by some of the best young talented drivers from across Asia, including Formula Master Champion Aiden Wright. The series visited four countries across the Asia, and we will just kick it off right here, right now, just behind me at the Korea International Circuit. Now let's enjoy some sounds and sights from Korea. Welcome to Korea! My name is KOU. My team name? Audi Korea Team. Oh! Peace in Korea! Woo! March Lee won the very first Audi R8 LMS Cup in 2012, and last year's season was even closer with a nail biting finish in Macau. Let's take a closer look at who came out on top and how. The 2013 Audi R8 LMS Cup came down to a battle between two drivers with contrasting seasons. Coming into the season finale in Macau, Alex Young had won five of the ten races, with no other driver winning more than two. But a false start penalty in Ordos, coupled with a crash in qualifying in Korea, saw the ex-F1 veteran experience both highs and lows. Meanwhile, young Hong Kong driver Adley Fong had been the model of consistency Six consecutive podium finishes to start the season and never out of the top five places the rest of the way. Young had more points in the bag after wins in Zhuhai, Ordos and Shanghai, plus a double victory on home soil in Malaysia. This move on Sun Jung in the penultimate race of the season saw Adelie Fung score enough points to keep the championship alive, extending the series into the final race of the year. But then this happened. Here comes Alex Young. Oh, I just kissed the barrier. Oh my word, that looks very nasty indeed. Young needed just one point to win the title, but the crash in qualifying meant he was unable to line up for the race. That left Adley Fong needing to beat everyone but the guest drivers in round 11, and it was looking good for him early on as he lay third behind guest drivers Eduardo Mortara and Andre Couto. But after Marchi Lee went inside Frankie Chung with this move, he had a few laps to attack Fong, with Adley knowing that if he conceded third place, the title would go to Alex Young. But Fong held on. Multara crossed the line in first to take the win. Kuto came round for second. Fong kept Lee at bay to take third place, and with it, the title by a mere two points. An incredible end to a fantastic season and a storybook ending for the young driver from Hong Kong. Joining Adley and Alex again this year will be Marchi Lee, third last year with two race wins and champion in 2012. Swiss DTM driver Rahel Fry won in Shanghai last year, but this year will be her first full season in the Cup, and she's keen to take on the boys. Frankie Chung was fifth overall last year and is one of China's most experienced drivers. He's sure to be challenging at the top. And Macau's Andre Kuto has previously been a guest driver, including a win last year in Zhuhai. He joins for the full season this year. Last year's championship was fantastic, but this year will be even better. Several changes to the series mean that the competition will be even more intense than ever. Let's take a closer look. got the biggest change is the push to pass system. You have a chance to press this button during the race and it will change the engine mapping of the car to give you more horsepower. The push to pass button is a uh, function 
where actually the driver has the ability to have 50 horsepower more for 10 seconds. Five times per race he can activate this button. In principle what the driver has to do, he has to drive the car. At the same time he has to do a mathematical calculation because he always has to observe where the other cars are and how many pushes he has still left. So I can see at the start of the race and all the cars are using it, everyone's going to use it. Um, but I can also see drivers trying to hold back a bit, you know, so that at the end of the race, if they have some more push to passes, they can try and use it to overtake someone. It's quite a useful tool, uh, especially down the long straight. I think in qualifying, you just got to use it as much as possible to try and get the perfect lap. I think what you will see is actually that the uh, very good and professional drivers will use it at the right time. You might see that uh, some of the gentlemen drivers use it also as a defense button. So if somebody comes from, from the back, he said, no, this guy is not passing me, so I press the button, so he's accelerating. Qualifying now is only for the first race. For this year, we introduced actually a new uh, qualifying uh, rule. Uh, the rule is actually that uh, we have the normal qualifying, which counts for the first race. And then actually, during the first race, the fastest lap will count for qualifying as a qualifying time for the second race. That would mean actually for the driver, he has still the opportunity in the first race to make a very, very fast lap and to be in front of the grid in the second race. The weight balance system is uh, something new, which we introduced also this year to the Audi R8 LMS Cup. Whoever wins a race, uh, will get 60 kilograms in his car mounted for the next race. So you have actually the first one will get 60 kilograms, the second will get 40 kilograms and the third one will get 20 kilograms. 60 kilograms in this car is a lot. Um, I mean, I've, I'm already starting a dieting program myself, you know. I, I'm, I'm, I'm already about 20 kilos heavier than some of the other drivers. I'm not going to tell you my weight. Alex Young has uh, just over 70 kilograms as a driver, so if you now have 60 kilograms on top of it, that means actually Marchi Lee would sit on his lap while he's driving. It makes it very hard to win with, with that sort of win because the competition this year is a lot tougher. I think the spectators and the fans have fed back and said that you know these are all little things that seem to be make it more interesting. So these little tweaks are just designed to give more entertainment to, to you guys. It seems that the push to pass function could really blow the series wide open. Let's go and check out all the action from the first race of the season. So we start the season under dry conditions here at the Korea International Circuit. It's 5.6 kilometers long, 18 turns, and the most crucial one of the lot is turn 14. As if you get that wrong at the heartbreaking area, you've only got four more turns to get past the leader and win the race. And here's how they started. In P1 was Frankie Chen, Macau's Andre Couto was in P2. Last year's champion Adli Fung was in third place, Alex Jung P4, and the 2012 champion March Lee was P5. In the second half of the grid, well, the debutant Aiden Wright was in P11. The amateur champion from last year was Alex Aou, he was in P13. And it's race time in Korea, and Frankie Chen uses push to pass right from the start to guarantee their lead into turn one. March Lee just got it a little bit wrong into the first turn and ended up just touching Andre Kuto, spinning him backwards. But Kuto still managed to keep the engine running and he got the car back onto the track. But sadly, he had to come into the pits and the mechanics looked into the problem and Kuto had to retire. Well, I, I was hit from a uh, driver, uh, it's very stupid of him, it's the first lap, it's the first race, we both have, it's a championship, uh, you know, you have to finish the both races and uh, I really, I'm really, really mad about this. After contact with Andre Kuta at Turn 1, KOU sustained damage to his car, which disappointed home fans and his team management. So as the race settled down, Frankie Chen is in the lead from Adli Fung. Alex Young managed to get past Dal O Young earlier on in the lap. Rahul Fry, who has joined the Audi R8 LMS Cup for the full season, started an attack on Dal O Young, cutting in on the inside at turn four. But the Hong Kong driver used all his experience to regain that position going into turn five. For the rest of the race, these two had a ding-dong battle for P4 and a Hong Kong turf war erupted at Turn 4 when Matt Solomon overtook Marchie Lee. The 2012 champion used every inch of his knowledge of the Audi R8 car to get past Matt Solomon, but they came together at Turn 6 
after the race. The stewards looked into this incident and penalised March Lee 30 seconds. The former champion wasn't finished yet. He sived through the field, overtaking Alex Al and also Stefano Montesi. Rahul Fry quickly learnt where the best places were to overtake on this Korean international circuit and Julia Blythe went, went past Daro Young. But Daro Young kept fighting hard, but Rahul Fry was up to the test. Coming into this tight turn four, she kept Daro Young wide, which made sure she kept her position. Frankie Chen's gamble of using three pushes to pass at the start of the race was a very wise decision as he maintained a huge advantage over Adley Fung and Alex Young all the way through the race. Alex desperately tried to get close to Adley Fung but when he used his push to pass he seemed to overcook it going into corners and finally as he came into the home straight Frankie Cheng won the season opener here at the Korea International Circuit from Adley Fung and Alex Young was the last man on the podium. Well, we have our new winner, Frankie Chan. Congratulations, Frankie. And talk us through the start. Uh, the start was quite eventful, but uh, luckily for myself, it was quite smooth. Uh, very bad luck from um, for Koto. I, I think he, he got a punch by somebody else. And uh, I had a really quite smooth race was able to control and uh, yes really happy to get my first win of the season and a really nice to start of season with a win and uh, now it's focusing on second one first place would have been nicer but uh, second place is not bad especially when uh, Alex had a bit more pace um, the car was understeering quite a lot for me through the slow speed corners so yeah I was struggling a bit uh, it's quite hot here in Korea we know you are very close to Adelie on the racetrack and of course are you a little bit disappointed not be able to overtake him? Yeah, no, I mean it was a good battle, Adelie fought well, um, you know, I, I had a, obviously I had a bit of contact on the first lap so the car was a bit different after that. But uh, I, was just, I was just saving my push to pass towards the end to see if I could catch him and it really worked. I had two goals at him but um, I had problems with the rears locking under braking so I just couldn't quite slow down the car enough to make the move stick. But still I'm happy with third place so that's pretty good. So here's how round one was won and lost. Frankie Chen is the first winner of the season from Adley Fung and Alex Young was the last man on the podium. Just as a footnote, March Lee, due to his 30-second penalty, dropped from 7th to 9th. And KOU was disappointed as he did not finish the race in front of his home fans. We just caught a pound. Matt and Aiden earlier today, and they are the fresh face to the series this year. Let's go and chat with them. When I was young, I uh, raced go-karts, and I raced a lot in Europe and, and Asia the first couple of years. And uh, Europe I raced for two years, and then the third year I raced in Japan for the whole year. And so through those years, you know, I finished multiple times in the top 10 in Europe and, and I won a few races in Japan. So. Well, I started racing back in 2004 in go-karts and uh, that was around Australia. Then I moved over to um, Europe and raced the European karting scene. And uh, from there, it was really finding which sort of uh, circuit event we could race um, you know, in Asia, close yeah. to Australia. Um, so we decided to race the JK Racing Series and uh, that really took off in 2011. And then... Um, from there it was just racing Formula Masters last year and I uh, managed to win that and you know I'm just going to try and carry the momentum. Matt, as we know this year you are racing for the Audi Hong Kong team and last year we have very famous singer and actor Eric Kwok uh, racing for this team and it seems very hard act to follow. Yeah, I mean Aaron did a great job last year, I think he finished third in the, in the Amateurs Cup. So that's you know, a, a very good result for Audi Hong Kong, but for sure this year they want to try and improve on that result and try to win. Um, so you know, they put me in the car and, and see what I can do. Uh, I'm very curious about why you change from the single-seater cars to the GT cars. Your GT cars are always going to, it's definitely growing in popularity throughout Asia and throughout Europe. It's definitely a more affordable step for anyone looking into motor motorsport. How will you learn from those? more experienced drivers like Alex Yon and Andrew Couto. We've got open um, 
data, so that's going to help us in many ways. Um, you know, we can toss data around to see which is better. I can learn their tricks. When you drive on the car, what is your feeling? Uh, excitement. It's a it's a beast to drive. I mean, we've got 560 horsepower. It's just a complete monster to drive, but it's you know, it's it's a rush. It should be great to watch both Matt and Aiden as they continue to develop throughout the year. Let's go now and check out all the action from round two. New for this year, the starting positions for the second round of the weekend were made up from the fastest lap times from the season opener. The Malaysian master and March Lee filled the front row, followed by Frankie Chen and the 2013 champion Adelie Fong. Rahul Fry was P5, then it was Daolo Young, and home favourite KOU had to start at the back of the grid alongside Andre Kuto after both drivers were unable to record a lap at full speed after crashing out early in round one. Pole sitter Alex Jong got away cleanly at the start, and despite having an extra 20 kilos in his car after a third place finish in round one, he used his push to pass to good effect here and maintained his lead into turn one. Behind him was March Lee and Frankie Chen trying to scramble onto his coattails, but Rahul Fry managed to move past Adley Fong to get up into fourth place. Later on in lap one, there's some real carnage as Stefano Montesi span out in the race at turn three. With Frankie Cheng struggling with his extra weight in his car, Rahul Fry took full advantage going past him as they went into turn four. Frankie would end up in fifth position. But at the same corner, Matt Solomon and Adley Fong came together and the reigning champion spun off. Fong's race was over and Solomon's car has sustained some pretty bad damage, as you can see. Back at the front, March Lee had closed the gap on race leader Alex Young and was looking for any possible way through, but the Malaysian was using all his track position to full effect and was able to stay ahead. Finally, Lee did find a way past Young, but no sooner had he done so, Young retook the lead with this move through corners one and two. Meanwhile, Rahar Fry in third was watching the boys closely and nearly used this opportunity to follow Alex Young past Marchie Lee, but she was unable to do so. But she stayed close behind them, pushing very hard for the next several laps. Neither car had any weight disadvantage and towards the end, Fry used her push to pass button superbly, going past Marchie Lee into second place with this move down the long one kilometre straight at turns two and three. There was no time left for her to take a run at the leader and the Malaysian master came round to take the win after a near perfect performance. Rahul Fry was second and Marchie Lee was third. How was it with the weight in your car? Uh, it was tricky, huh? Um, I'd drive a perfect lap and think, okay, I got a gap to march in. The march would actually close the gap. And I thought, crap. Every lap, that 20 kilos, I could feel. Um, but I just tried to defend without using the push to pass. And March was obviously using it, so I think he ran out of push to pass earlier than me. So that, I think, was the, like, the key. It was a brilliant ra race to drive. Uh, there was a lot of action going on. We see that this push to pass system uh, makes really fun, not only for us drivers in the car, but as well for the spectators. It was amazing, so uh, I'm looking forward to it for the next race. Of course, I was uh, aiming higher, of course, the win, that I have the speed. But uh, I think I need to think about the uh, push and pass system more carefully. I think Alex and Rahul do a better job and uh, in the end uh, the ties that I pushed in the beginning was really hard so I dropped in quite a lot then you know Rahel is having still a push though absolutely no fight then I settled for third and uh, that's all. Meanwhile behind the leaders there had been quite a battle. Andre Kudo had started from the very back of the grid in 20th position but early on had already moved up all the way to sixth place. He tried this move on Daryl O'Young to climb even further but O'Young held firm. Just behind home favourite KOU was doing almost as well as Kuto, having started in 19th position and had made his way up to 7th place. Darrow Young in the blue and yellow CTVS racers car then moved up to 4th place with this move on the handicapped Frankie Chen. And KO went past Kuto, 
and both drivers passed Frankie Chen, who was laboured by his extra 60 kilograms in his car. Roared on by home fans, KO was looking for a way past Darrow Young, but was having no luck. But in the latter stages, KOU was trying to have a fantastic comeback for his fans and the two cars clashed when KOU went up into fourth place. KO maintained his position and made his team management very, very happy after winning the Four Rings Trophy for round two. So many people is coming here, it's my friend, always is fighting, fighting. I like it. Korea, because it's I win or it's the low championship, P1. Thank you, thank you very much. So after a great weekend of racing here at Korea International Circuit, this is how round two finished. Alex Yong was the winner and Rahul Fry and March Lee finished second and third with KOU, the home favorite in fourth place. Frankie Chen, Saturday's winner in P5. Andre Kuto, Alex Au were sixth and seventh with Jeffrey Lee in eighth place. The second half of the field looks like this. Sung Jing Zhu was 11th, Jack Young was 12th, Darrow Young unfortunately was 13th, and Wu Zhu and the rest did not finish. And after the first stop in Korea, this is how it stands in the Drivers' Championship. Alex Young is leading by four points from Frankie Chen, Rahai Fry is in 30 points, Adli Fong has 18, and down in eighth place is Matt Solomon, and he gets a five-place penalty for round three in Japan when we next see them here in the Audi R8 LMS Cup. What a fantastic start to the season with the race win for Frankie Chen and Alex Yong. A phenomenal comeback performance from KO in front of his home fans. And of course, it's great to have Rahul Fra on the podium as well. The push to pass and the weight ballast elements have added lots of excitement to the race and with just five drivers on the podium across two races, it looks like this season will be more competitive than ever. But we've got another five race weekends throughout the year. We will all be heading to Japan and hope you can join us and see you soon. Goodbye. <laughs>